a lot of the reason why a lot of us find ourselves in spaces or with people that are not good for us is truly because of lack of self-respect what society is trying to actively do is make women push down those parts of us that are feminine you cannot contract out building your self-esteem you've gone through 1000 experiences and you still respond the same way to all those experiences <laughs> Hey my loves, welcome to the channel. My name is Susan and today I'm going to be talking about how to be the total package. And I came here today with this stick to drive my point across because I know some of you have coconut head. I will not hear if you don't say something like this here. So I'm just going to keep it here and raise it up from time to time as we go along this topic. A lot of people will talk about high value men, high value women when it concerns like looking for someone to spend the rest of your life with and rightfully so, right? Because you definitely want to be spending the rest of your life is not in that sense to so some degree you're going to most likely be spending the next 80 to 90 years of your life with this person so you definitely want it to be with the right person well the purpose of this video is not to talk about it as it relates to relationship it's just to talk about how you can identify some areas in your life that you could level up in and how you can you know potentially level up in those areas and i know some people you know when they hear how to be the total package they're going to be like why do you need to tell me how to be total package I am okay as I am. I just have one question for you. Why do you want to be half package? Why do you want to be quarter package when you can be the full package? I'm not here to claim that I know how to be the full package. So get that out of your mind right now because I personally am still growing. But there's some certain things, there's some certain experiences I've come across that I feel that a lot of other people could learn from that I think is useful to you even as a human being. It's useful to the relationships around you to have them besides just being in a relationship to have them for the purpose of yourself. My name is Susanna. On this channel, I talk about tech career advice, personal development, faith-based topics, and sometimes some lifestyle topics. Today is a very cold day. This video is going to be done. One of the first things that separates a woman of value from others is being able to master your emotions. Emotional maturity is a big thing. Are you an emotional roller coaster? Do you get easily triggered by someone's words or how they react or the things that they say? To be emotionally mature means that you understand how to respond to situations. For example, if you're in a, an emotionally triggered situation, someone says something that's upsetting, maybe you guys were having a conversation and the next thing the conversation is escalating someone is getting angry what do you do like it's probably time for you to take a step back to not say something else that will keep triggering the other person knowing when to pause say things that do not further make the situation or the space hostile another point of view of being emotionally mature is a situation where for example you're having a conversation and someone is talking about a sad experience what do you say a lot of people do not know how to respond when something bad happens to someone else. Some people just are better off keeping quiet or not saying anything. Emotional maturity means being able to read the room, to understand like what to say in a particular situation. It's very okay to be upset about certain situations. We get upset by maybe things that people do, expectations that you had that someone is not meeting up to. Women have hormonal changes and sometimes you just get upset for no reason. Like today I was still angry and I did not even know why I was angry. How do you communicate how you're feeling, right? So that you're not transferring that aggression to someone else that is undeserving <laughs> of your anger. There are a couple of people that are naturally calm. They are in certain situations and they will not say anything. Like there are some people that you will talk, say everything, annoy them, do this, do that. They just be looking at you. Some people are naturally gifted with being able to respond like this, while some other people are not. Some of us learn through experiences, but some other people you've gone through one thousand experiences and you still respond the same way. So all those experiences, you have to change your life. You have to do something about it. So I'm going to do a separate video on some books that I think can help you to be more emotionally mature. If you see yourself in a situation where you are always responding the same way to similar situations you've gone through before, you probably need to be more proactive about how you handle it. I hope I will not be cancelled for this next one I'm about to say. But I'm going to say it anyway. Now let me hold my... Okay, I don't think the stick is necessary this time. But the second thing I believe that is important for a woman of value to embrace is her femininity. Society has made it look like women are 
you know weak when they are feminine or when they embrace this part of them i think that it's just very important to know that there are traits that are shaded with women in general there are specific traits that are common with women based on their location for example a woman in india might act differently from a woman in the US and my act differently from a woman in Nigeria but besides the location and the cultural influence on women's behavior there are still specific traits that are particular to women for example things like being sensitive or being empathetic now I'm speaking in terms of data and generally I know this is a general statement for example some women might not be empathetic some women might not be gentle I get that but generally speaking there are certain traits that are found with women the fact is that you have some specific traits that are particular to you and what I'm trying to say in this video is that you should identify what those traits are that make you feminine and embrace them what society is trying to actively do is make women push down those parts of us that are feminine a lot of men are trying to act like women women are trying to act like men God has created each and every one of us differently there are unique attributes that are found with men there are unique attributes that are found with women and women should embrace those unique attributes that are found with them. I understand as well that there are a lot of biases towards women that sometimes make women act in a particular way. For example, because in time past, women have always been the one, you know, staying at home to take care of the kids and, you know, not working. So now women are like, oh, we take back our power, we must work and this and this and that. There's good reason for that, right? Because some women have been abused because they cannot fend for themselves because they have no choice. And so they stay in abusive relationships. And so women are now actively trying to fend for themselves by being independent by taking jobs by doing all that stuff but in the process I feel like a lot of women are trying to push down their femininity actively trying to feel like they have it all covered they don't need a man they don't need anyone and I believe that that is an extreme. If a woman that is thinking this way, I want you to understand that at the core of everyone is the desire to have some sort of companionship. No matter what people are making it look like to you on this internet that, oh, I don't care what anybody thinks, I can be by myself. There is that innate desire of every human being to share companionship, to share love, to share connection. And while you might have had bad experiences with people, it doesn't mean that you have to be alone because of those bad experiences. You can still find a good person that you can be with. Don't because of the craziness of this world, don't make that rip you of your femininity don't so part of being a high value woman is knowing times that you should accept help allowing yourself to be helped allowing yourself to be taken care of femininity is very attractive and i think that you should embrace what makes you a woman you should embrace the qualities that god has put in you that make you unique that make you not a man don't try to do things just because a man can do them do them because you want to do them the third thing that makes you a high value woman is cultivating self respect respect yourself say after me i will respect myself okay good respecting yourself means respecting your time respecting your mind respecting your body respecting your space respecting the things that you place value on by respecting yourself you want to stop watching the things that are disrespectful to your mind and body what are the things that you're watching that are not helping you to grow that are reducing your iq be careful what you allow in you definitely want to be selective with places you go who you go with be selective with invitations you accept you know you can't just be everywhere you know everywhere every place like just accepting every invitation as if you don't have anything else to do with your life. Self-respect means you value yourself and so it will impact the kind of decisions that you make. It will impact the kind of places you go, the kind of things you do, the kind of people you see, the kind of people you accept into your life. Okay, a lot of reason why a lot of us find ourselves in spaces or with people that are not good for us is truly because of lack of self-respect. If you really think about it, when you sit back and think about it, what made me, what brought me to this place? What was I in my life when I met this person? Am I still there today? What do I need to change that? Self-respect is super, super, super important. And this comes in, it's not just something that will just come upon you in a day, to come in kind of decisions you take. Small, small decisions you take every day, build your self-respect. So the fourth thing is self-esteem. I've talked about self-esteem a couple of times on this video. Self-esteem affects every area of your life. It affects your aspirations, your relationships. It's 
basically the bedrock of, of a lot of experiences in life and how you're able to thrive. Building it is an inside job. You cannot contract out building your self-esteem. You know the way you contract out like having a gym instructor that helps you. You have to see value in yourself and accept it and it has to be something that you really believe for it to play out in all areas of your life. You have to understand that how you see yourself affects every area of your life. Nobody can impose value on yourself besides the value that you accept or you have for yourself. In essence, if people rate you like this or if people have this level of value for you and you have this level of value for yourself, you're going to be operating on this level of value because this is the one that is inherent in you that is the one that you have come to accept for yourself that is one that you wake up every day seeing yourself in that place okay you might have been in a bad relationship that kind of maybe affected your self-esteem the fact that something affected your self-esteem does not take away your value people always use this uh, illustration of a squeezed hundred dollar notes and a clean hundred dollar notes. A crispy clean hundred dollar means notes coming from whatever bank in the USA. And a squeezed trampled upon hundred dollar notes that is under a bridge have the same value. They can both be used to buy exactly the same quantity of things or quality of things. The only difference is that one is squeezed and one is clean. The fact that someone bends your self-esteem kind of, you know, affected your self-esteem or a situation, a circumstance, a bad, a toxic relationship affects your self-esteem does not bring down or reduce your value you have like that has to be i have to hold the stick a bad relationship that affected your self-esteem does not reduce your value so you yourself have to remember that even if your self-esteem was affected it can be built back up your value did not change because of that situation bear that in mind nobody can impose value that you did not accept and that's the importance of being in christ because you see that your value is the value that you have received as a result of accepting christ and that value is high it's very high it's priceless because jesus paid the price nobody else in this world can pay the price the fifth thing is being kind and compassionate and i think that before you can really be kind to others you must be kind to yourself first of all you can't give what you don't have being kind to yourself means forgiving yourself for past mistakes it means applauding yourself when you do stuff that you're proud of celebrating yourself these are things that would help you to also be kind to others you know when you are kind to yourself you can be kind to others you have the ability to be kind to others you have the ability to celebrate others if you're not doing something for you, if you're not celebrating yourself you achieve one thing you're like hmm Oh, I made uh, I've already gone way past this. So, this one is what's this? What's this? I don't really, or you get one job that you've been trying to get all this while. Maybe the job is paying you like 250k dollars, okay? And then your friend just told you yesterday that they got a job that's paying them 350k dollars and get the job, and you're like, oh, well, my friends are doing more than this. So, we are always measuring up to someone else's standards. There is no way. You are going to be able to celebrate others because it's not just something you're used to even with yourself so learn to be kind to yourself learn to celebrate yourself so you can celebrate others and the final thing i'm going to say today um about what makes a high value woman is taking accountability i think this is very important because the blame game is very common the fact is that it's easy to blame someone else for a situation you are trying to learn a new skill you don't have some resources maybe you don't have some things that will help you master the skill you don't have this you don't have that quite acceptable but the point is still that you have to take accountability for the fact that you have not learned the skill yet because nobody owes you anything the earlier you realize that you need to take accountability for that situation the closer you will be towards getting it done if you keep blaming a situation or keep blaming something responsible for you not achieving a particular goal you will be stuck in that rut a big girl and a high value woman takes accountability you know what needs to be done it doesn't necessarily mean you have the resources to do it but you know what needs to be done and you know that you need to do it don't be a kid when you need to go to the gym and you're not going to the gym when you need to eat right and you're not eating right so that take accountability 
okay i'm speaking to myself as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope at the end of this video you have learned all you need to learn to be a high value woman because i'm gonna be looking out for you to make sure that you're keeping to the promise you made at the beginning of this video until the next time i come your way go about your day being a high value woman i will see you in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching this video i remain susan and i'll see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.